Today I'm going to be showing what CRC intake valve and turbo cleaner can do versus intake valves or should I say versus sea foam. So let's go ahead and show you guys the challenge that lies ahead. Sea foam and CRC intake valve and turbo cleaner claim their way to fame but can they really perform against gunked up intake valves on a direct injection engine? Well this is a question we all want to know. So as you can see, there's plenty of carbon buildup to go around. So we're going to find out once and for all which is best, CRC or Seafoam. This video is not going to be about how much smoke we can get out the tailpipe. Woo. Okay guys, go ahead, let your engine warm up. Once you've reached operating temperature, you can go ahead and start the process. So to let you guys know, I'm not responsible for any arms or limbs that you may lose, like if you was to reach your hand inside the engine while it's running against your belts and pulleys. Okay, let's go ahead, dive right in. First, loosen any clamps that might be in your way so you can access past the mass airflow sensor if you have one. We don't have one, so we don't have to worry. You loosen this up first. Pull this off. Pull this off. But if for some reason your car has trouble running, you want to insert it in between this with this still connected. CRC claims for best results, locate and spray directly through the throttle body. Also, if the space is tight, you can definitely turn the can upside down as it says on the instructions. So what you want to do, just go ahead and start spraying into your throttle body once you've raised your RPMs up to about 2,500 RPMs. As you guys can see, we're hitting about 2,500 RPMs. Spray in short bursts until the can is empty. Red, are we getting any smoke? Eh, don't see any. Not really all that important. Well, y'all here with Nate's Interactive Auto, we're gonna find out which is best, CRC or Seafoam. So if you wanna see a lot of other great tests, I suggest you guys subscribe to the channel because we're definitely gonna test it all in every way possible. So, can we still not see any smoke? Eh, guess not. Make sure you're safe every time that you do these tests. Please don't reach your hand back in here with the exhaust manifold. Okay guys, accelerate to 3500 RPMs two to three times once the can is empty. Once you've done this, go ahead and let it idle for just one moment. Then once you've let it idle for one moment, Go ahead and shut the engine off. Okay guys, go ahead and let your engine heat soak for one hour. Next, go ahead and reassemble that air filter assembly. Once you've done this, move on to the very last step. In this last step, drive for 10 minutes. That's what we're doing now. Okay guys, I'm going to show you what the results are side by side comparison. This way you guys are able to compare one to the other and see which one's best instead of just going ahead and looking at it now. So hey, let's just go ahead and see how to use this stuff. It says to increase our RPMs from about 500 to 1000 RPMs. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you guys can see, without an extra person I use this electric seat 
or if it's a seat you have to push manually, insert something in between it. Now we have a little bit over the RPM that it suggests. This way you can compensate if your engine starts to die or anything of that nature. This way we don't run into that problem. So let's go ahead and move this air box out of the way. You want to spray this in past the mass airflow sensor. Do this in short bursts until the can is empty. So, are we getting any smoke? Well, not quite yet, but this is not what this video is about. Continue until your entire can is empty. Go ahead and return our idle speed to normal. So let's just go ahead and take our little jack handle out of there. All right, guys, go ahead and insert your air filter assembly. Okay, guys, once you've got your RPM down, everything's put back together, like your filter assembly, Go ahead and shut your engine off and let it heat soak for one hour. The instructions say 15 minutes. We're going to give it a little bit extra time. We're going to do similar instructions with the CRC. This way the results aren't impacted. Hey guys, once you're done letting it heat soak, let's go for a drive. And it says drive aggressively. So I'm going to do the same as I did for the CRC. Well guys, let's go ahead and get the final results so we can put this together for you guys and show you just how this worked. Which one will win? Let me know in the comments below which one you think won. And if not, let me know which one you've had experience with. So, let's move on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first observable valve. CRC. Can it handle this challenge? Okay, the second observable valve. This is what it looks like before. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third observable valve. Here we have the third observable valve. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the very last valve. Here's a look at the fourth observable valve. And boy, does CRC have a job in front of it. Okay, guys, and we have it. CRC the very first valve. Wow, what a difference. Man, this is a lot of reduced carbon buildup. I really can't believe it. Now usually when this stuff really gets caked on here for long periods of time, it's hard to get off. So treating it every now and then can really go a long ways. So this is valve number two. Let's move on to valve number three. Once again, great results. I really am impressed by this CRC. Here we have valve number four. Wow, what a difference. This stuff really does help. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Okay guys, let's go ahead and look at the first observable valve for seafoam. It definitely has a tough challenge ahead also. Here's the second observable valve for seafoam. Here's the third valve for seafoam. Can seafoam do it? Well, we're about to find out. And finally, the fourth valve. A lot of carbon buildup, definitely. Now, let's check out the results. Alright guys, and the results are in for seafoam. Wow, I can definitely tell a difference. Look at the reduced carbon buildup. So let's go ahead and move to the second valve. Seafoam really done a great job. Look at this, I have to say. But you know what? I don't like to really give my opinion. Sometimes I just can't help myself, especially with results like this. Let's move on to the third valve. Here we have the third valve and a lot of reduced carbon buildup. I'm ready to see. Can CRC step up to the plate? Alright guys, 
and this is the final valve. Wow, what a great job by Seafoam on this final valve. Definitely a lot of reduced carbon buildup. Well guys, as always, I want to thank you for watching Nate's Interactive Auto.